Well, one of the things that we've done here, uh, this is a sign-in sheet and a thing for brochures. This is a county park. And in order for them to keep track of the number of people that attend and how much these county parks are being used, they have a sign-in sheet. Anytime you visit a state park, national park, county park, a recreational area, it's a good idea to sign in. It's our, our taxpayer money that goes to fund these things and they really need to know who's using them and how things are going. Uh, they also provide a map of the, the area. This is the North Walking Water Creek here in Polk County, Florida. Uh, the County Environmental Lands Program and the Board of County Commissioners sponsor this. And so it's just got a simple little trail map that shows you where everything is. And this is a loop trail. Haven't, uh, looks like it's only about a one mile, maybe a mile and a half loop. So we're gonna try it and see how it is. So we'll see you on the trail. Uh, there's two trails. The first trail is the shorter trail. It just goes around this little lake that we see here. This little fishing pond that they've dug. Uh, looks like it might have some good fishing in it. Not sure. But little fishing pond here. I know Lake Walking Water has some really good bass fishing. Lake Rosalie, which is just to the north of this, also has some good fishing. So it's pretty make good sense that there might be some good fishing in here. There's two trails here at the North Walking Water Track. The first one is this little loop that just goes around the fishing pond. It's a half mile loop. And at the north end of this, a second trail starts that's a mile loop. So we're gonna to try to take the whole thing today and just see how it works out. There's Sarah, and so she's ready, and we're gonna go ahead and take off. Environmentally, this area has a lot of scrub oak, which is a, a wild growing live oak tree that grows well in sandy areas. There's also a lot of palmetto in this area. And we're actually right here beside a business too, but the trail goes alongside their property. It's important to remember whenever you're hiking, wherever you're hiking, to make sure whatever you carry in with you, you carry out. One of the most aggravating things to me as we're hiking along places and, and traveling is just what we see right here. Somebody left their McDonald's cup sitting on the picnic table. Why? There's a garbage can right there. So clean up after yourself. Don't make others do it for you. spots painted on the trees or well-maintained trails yeah sometimes your trail isn't well maintained and you have to look for those marks in the trees surroundings because you never know what you might come up on and, um, and this tree right here that we're looking at the one on the right there is a honey hive in there and uh, I'm pretty sure because there's bees going in and out and I'm sure that I'm sure that not in that tree that gall is probably full of honey not too far up to the, to the second knot in the tree on the right, I don't know if you can see it, is a snake skin.
Up here in this tree is some plant growth that are called epiphytes. They're a, an airborne plant. They're not rooted. They just land on the tree. And these are, some of these are called resurrection fern. Now these aren't. These are actually in a, a moss. And resurrection fern starts to turn brown when you don't have a lot of rain. And then when you've got a good rain, it all turns nice and bright green. So you can tell from this resurrection fern that we haven't had rain in quite a while. Well, not much of it anyway. Because most of the most of this time or most of this area has a lot of moisture in it and the epiphytes grow on the trees and just absorb moisture from the air they don't steal anything from the tree uh, the only problem that you have with them on a tree is if they get so thick that the tree can't absorb any sunshine but since you, as you notice most of the time they just clamp onto the bark, attach onto the bark, so there's really nothing that they're drawing from the tree itself. They're just getting nutrients and moisture from the air. So this area is pretty moist. Now we mentioned, we stopped a minute ago and looked at those bees that were coming in and out of the trees. Great agricultural industry. There's a business not far from here. We may stop there on the way home. Struthers Honey House is kind of a unique operation because they keep honey there all the time and it's an honor system. You go in, you pick up the honey that you want and you drop your money into a cash box there. ecosystem you have miniature ecosystems the uh, tree the trees with the epiphytes that we just came out of was a more um, uh, dense or hardwood forest hard, hardwood forest and so now we've come out of that area back into some more scrub oaks and pine area the epiphyte area tend to be more wet and this area tends to be more dry on one side but more wet on this side because these are aren't these little bay trees over here no this is actually um, oh. myrtle bushes okay. not crepe myrtles but myrtle bushes and this area is called a flatwood the pine flatwoods you see the the bare grass that's growing here and a pine flatwoods actually does get wet sometimes but Mostly it's just the pines, the grasses, things like palmetto berries are becoming an industry also. And now these are just, these are very young. You don't have any, any growth on them, but that's the flowers that's growing up out of the palmettos that will eventually turn into palmetto berries. And it's kind of a lucrative business, but it's important that if you're going to harvest palmetto berries, first of all, that you get a license to do it and that you get permission from the landowners when you go on your land. We're about to wrap up our walk here at the North Walker Water Creek track. So, Sarah, what do you think about the walk? Well, I think it was a really pretty walk, even though it was out in the scrub and the pine woods. Um, the, my favorite area was the area where the epiphytes were. I thought the, the trees all looked really hairy. I thought it was neat. <laughs> 
hairy trees. Hairy trees. But it's a nice area, like we said before. Get out and explore your, your own backyard and see what's around. Uh, back there behind Sarah, you see Highway 60, which is how you get here. We decided to stop at Struthers Honey House and pick up some honey. So let's go inside and see what they have. They have quite a selection of honey and they, they make their own honey. They have their own. They have different sizes and it's on the honor system. Put your money right in the box. In the box there. So they have gap, what's that, a quart? Six they have pounds. Two pounds, one pound, 24 ounce and a honey bear. They got honey candy. And then they've got six pound. And two pounds. They range anywhere from $6 to $30, depending on what size you get. The smaller bears, they're only $5. So, honey, you go ahead and get, honey, you go ahead and get what kind of honey you want. So, as Paul said, it's on the honor system. You just drop your money in the box here. change in. So make sure that what you put in there is at least how much you get. And it would hurt you a little bit more. So thank you Mr. Struthers for Struthers Honey House. Been in operation since 1935. So 65 years, no, 85 years of honey production here.